Hey guys, hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. Hope everyone's having a good day. Today I want to talk about one of the stories that I like in the Star Wars Legends universe that I think deserves a bit more attention. I do this occasionally when I think of one or when I read one that I think you guys would like. I like to spend a whole video talking about it and looking at it in depth. We've got a very unique story today that comes from the old Star Wars Daily newspaper strip that existed in the 80s. We're going to be talking about Darth Vader's resurrection of the one and only Obi-Wan Kenobi after his death on the first Death Star. Before we do, I'd just like to thank my sponsor for today's video, and that is everyone over at patreon.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. I'd like to give a special thank you to Chris, who last night became my first $50 patron. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to go to patreon.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. You'll get access to exclusive rewards, and occasionally when I do video shoutouts, I'll get your name up on the screen. Anyway, on to today's content. Today we're talking about a story arc called The Return of Ben Kenobi from the old Star Wars Daily Newspaper series. For those that don't know, the Los Angeles Times did used to post a daily Star Wars comic strip. These stories were considered part of the official Expanded Universe, and The Return of Ben Kenobi was the story arc featured between May and July of 1982. I really love these stories, and I think the thing that I appreciate the most is just how beautiful the artwork is. The characters look exactly like you'd expect them to, they use traditional comic book style art instead of digital art. Al Williamson, who is the illustrator, really has an amazing style that makes these a true pleasure to read. The art also has a pulpy, kind of 1950s fantasy vibe to it at times, which I think mixes well with the stories, which are never too serious and can at times border on outrageous. As a brief note, when the strips first ran in paper, they were in black and white. However, if you look at any collected versions now, you can find them recolored fairly easily. I've included a link in the description where you can buy one of these collections, which includes many of the daily Star Wars comic strips, including this arc. The story starts out on the planet of Aridas. There, a squad of stormtroopers is attacking a rebel base. Out of nowhere, a cloaked man appears from the desert and defeats the stormtroopers with a lightsaber, calling himself Ben Kenobi. News of this reaches the heroes of the Rebellion on Yavin 4, and of course Luke Skywalker wants to go investigate. It's sometimes easy to forget that Obi-Wan was an instrumental part of Luke Skywalker's early years. In the Expanded Universe, Luke would often find himself, especially before he met Yoda, asking what Obi-Wan would do and wishing that Obi-Wan were there to provide guidance. Luke wants to go to the planet to try to find Obi-Wan. Everyone from the Rebellion, including his sister and Han Solo, basically says no, but he goes anyway. Along with him come R2-D2 and C-3PO, who have stowed away on his ship. At this point, I just want to mention how beautiful the vehicle designs are. We see, for example, the Star Destroyer in orbit, and it looks really good, as does Luke's ship here. We also see an Imperial hover train, which looks appropriately sleek and futuristic. And then we see what's called a Wind Runner, which has a very cool, fantastical vibe to it. When they reach the planet, Luke discovers that the inhabitants are trying to take down the aforementioned hover train. They don't have the munitions to do it themselves, so Luke helps by using explosives, but in the process is injured himself. In a scene which mirrors Obi-Wan Kenobi's introduction in A New Hope, Luke regains consciousness to find the old man looking down at him, with C-3PO at his side. We then find out that this whole plan has been orchestrated by Darth Vader. The Obi-Wan that appears before Luke is not who he appears. He is, in fact, an actor. This is one of Darth Vader's many schemes to capture Luke, which, as a whole, pervade the Star Wars Expanded Universe at this point. Darth Vader is relying on Luke's lack of sophistication in the Force, along with Imperial technology and surgery, to trick Luke. This is kind of an outrageous scheme, admittedly, but if you think about it, Luke only really knew Obi-Wan for a couple of days, depending on how long they were in the Millennium Falcon together. Darth Vader's plan specifically is to have Obi-Wan lead Luke to a place called the Iron Tower. Obi-Wan will tell Luke that they're there to attack it and to take down an important Imperial communications array, while in reality, Darth Vader will confront the young Jedi. To further gain Luke's trust, the imposter uses technology to mimic Obi-Wan's force powers. He uses, for example, a shield to block oncoming laser fire, saying that he instead did it with the force, also taking out Imperial squads who 
are feebly blocking their journey to the Iron Tower. In typical Darth Vader fashion, the Sith Lord has absolutely no problem with this. As he usually does, he treats the Imperial soldiers as totally expendable resources. Along the way, as they face various Imperial forces, Luke Skywalker seems ready on multiple occasions to throw down his life to protect Obi-Wan. He's got great love for the old man and a realization that an active Obi-Wan would be a vital resource to the Rebellion. He's literally ready to die at certain points and ready to give his life just so Obi-Wan can be successful on the mission. Throughout this, the imposter is totally struck by the love, the admiration, and the total affection that Luke has for the man that he's pretending to be. On one hand, he is impressed by his acting skills, but on the other hand, he's impressed by the strength of Luke's character and the good man that he is. The cracks in his resolve start showing very early, and at one point he asks, what would the real Obi-Wan do? As he continues to feel guilty, Darth Vader nonetheless appears at the Iron Tower, leaving his Star Destroyer in a shuttle. In another nod to A New Hope, when they reach the tower, they split up. Luke trying to reach the communications array at the top, and Obi-Wan going to turn off the tower's defenses. Instead, however, Obi-Wan Kenobi meets with Darth Vader. Throughout this, however, Luke starts to sense the presence of the dark side and of Darth Vader himself. Still, Luke continues on. In another part of the tower, Darth Vader tells Kenobi that to summon Luke to the trap, he has to pretend to be injured. The false Kenobi refuses, saying that he's come to believe in the part that he's been playing, basically saying that he will no longer do this, he is going to do what is right as the real Ben Kenobi would. Striking against him, Darth Vader pushes Kenobi with the force, injuring him. However, Kenobi realizes that this was a great mistake. Luke will surely feel the dark side energy and will realize it's a trap. Darth Vader leaves Kenobi, turning to chase after Luke before he escapes. Kenobi, however, in a stroke of comic book luck, is lying next to a main control switch. He somehow easily manages to rig the control switch to explode, causing serious damage to the tower. The explosion appears to consume both the Sith Lord and the Imposter. Obi-Wan is thrown from the tower and lays mortally wounded on the ground outside. He reveals his deception to Skywalker, stating that surely you've realized I'm not your old mentor, just an imposter who came to love the part. I only hope I played it well. With that, he dies, and Luke and the rest of the Rebel Alliance are left wondering about the fate of the Dark Lord. Obviously, Darth Vader would survive this encounter. We get one final shot of him sitting on a steel girder, looking, as he often does, out at the distance with anger and frustration. Luke Skywalker has once again escaped his grasp. And that's it. That's Obi-Wan Kenobi's return from death in Star Wars Legend. I will say that this video did have a lot less analysis than I usually bring, and it was more just a retelling of a story that I think some of you guys wouldn't be familiar with. Let me know if you guys like this video. There are hundreds of stories in Star Wars Legends that are as unique as this one, and I really like sharing them with you guys. So if you guys liked it, give it a like, and if this video is successful, I'll know that you want more. Anyway, thank you for watching. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.